Now let's move to the third uh, major causes or the major cause of uh, environmental uh, degradation, okay? Or environmental problem. This is a uh, very uh, serious one also, okay? So this is what we call the poverty. So poverty can have harmful environmental and health effects. Okay, why? So poverty is a condition in which people are unable to, pull, to fulfill their basic needs for adequate food, shelter, water, health care, and education. This is, this is our basic needs, okay? Food, shelter, water, health care, and education. So that means you are poor or you are under poverty if you are unable to fulfill this kind of basic needs, okay? According to the World Bank, about 900 million people live in extreme poverty. So, so that means they are struggling to live on the equivalent of less than uh, $1.25 a day. So what is $1.25? That is around uh, 60 pesos, okay? Which is less than what many people spend for a bottle of water or a cup of coffee. About one of every three or 2.6 billion of the world's people struggle to live on less than $2.25 a day. That could be equivalent to $150 or $130, okay? Okay, that is actually in extreme poverty. They cannot provide or they cannot provide their basic needs. And poverty can cause a number of environmental, harmful environmental and health effects, okay? So, why? Why do you say so that poverty can have harmful environmental and health effects? It's because the daily lives of the world's poorest people are focused on getting enough food, water, and cooking and heating fuel to survive, okay? Since they are unable to fulfill their basic needs, then they need to find a way that they can provide their own food. They need to get food, water, cooking, and heating fuel for them to survive, okay? So they are more focused on that. Desperate for short-term survival. That is what we call desperate for short-term survival. These individuals do not have the luxury of uh, worrying about uh, uh, if they get this uh, food or shelter or they get this resource, uh, does it have an environmental effects or not? So if you are already poor and you, you, are, uh, you, are, you are actually on survival, okay? So will you worry about all those things? Okay, no, right? Okay, so you need to survive. Then that's the time you need to get food. You need to have shelter. You need to have water. Okay, so you don't have a uh, luxury of time to worry about environmental quality. Uh, whenever you get this kind of food, like for example, you get a banana or you get an apple. Uh, maybe it has, or you will think, ah, uh, no, I will not get this banana because it may can cause uh, some environmental effects. No, you don't have time for that because you are actually undergoing poverty. You need to fulfill your basic needs. And because of this, uh, this they can actually degrade forests. Remember, 900 million people are experiencing extreme poverty. If this 900 people will eventually get the resource to the environment that they could possibly degrade our natural uh, capital, okay? So the great forests, uh, topsoil and grasslands, and deplete fisheries and wildlife populations in order to stay alive. Okay, so this will now have the harmful effects. Okay, in Philippines, we have actually fairly have high poverty rate, with more than 16% living people below the poverty line, and almost 17.6 million people or Filipinos cannot provide their own basic needs. So this is our uh, state uh, and uh, status, okay, in the Philippines, okay, about our poverty. So we have a fairly 
high poverty rate okay you notice 16 percent that is how much of how many people are that not only below the poverty line and almost 17.6 million people cannot provide their own basic needs so they are actually experiencing extreme poverty 17.6 million people okay so just what i have said the environmental effects of poverty will now be a uh, degradation of forests okay topsoil and grassland and also deplete fisheries and wildlife populations because they want uh, to survive okay so not necessarily okay that the poverty can cause uh, environmental degradation but other poor countries also have an beneficial environmental impact why because they plant and nurture trees and and conserve the soils they depend on as a part of their long-term survival strategy okay so those poor countries that are uh, desperate for short-term survival okay, they have the ability to degrade the natural capital okay or to have uh, envir negative environmental impact however for those countries who are who have the thinking or who have the thought or who have the knowledge for a long-term survival then they could increase the beneficial environmental impact impact because once they get this kind of resource they 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 have the they have solutions or they have a suitable solutions to to provide to provide their needs or to meet their basic needs for a long term okay so that's the time that they have to plant and nurture trees and even conserving the soils okay so that's the the uh, environmental or the negative environmental impacts for short-term survival but in long-term survival it does actually uh, uh, increase beneficial environmental impacts okay so for for health effects okay and poverty so environmental degradation can have severe health effects on poor people and one of the problem or which is a life-threatening problem is what we call the malnutrition okay some of the uh, countries have uh, this kind of problem okay since uh, especially in the Bangladesh okay and even in the poor uh, countries where children uh, younger than age five or less are actually starving okay and they are suffer from severe uh, malnutrition which is when we say malnutrition is a lack of protein and other nutrients needed <coughs> for good health and this resulting from environmental degradation that interferes with uh, food production okay another source or another uh, such effect of health is that illnesses that caused by limited access to adequate uh, sanitation facilities and clean drinking water okay so about one of every eight of the world's people get water for drinking washing and cooking from sources polluted by human and animal presence so because of poverty so you can have a limited access to these sanitation facilities okay because you don't have money to buy this uh, uh, clean drinking water okay or to to gain access with this uh, adequate sanitation facilities because sometimes all of these uh, sanitation facilities it involves money okay but you are poor you don't you cannot provide that kind of money so therefore you need to get uh, drinking water which are unsanitized okay so and that's the time that it can cause you illnesses okay because you get this drinking sources from polluted uh, sources okay polluted by human and even animal feces okay so so it it can have an effect or health effects on you and this is actually reality okay for poor countries and especially those people who are suffering from poverty okay let's go to the uh, fourth one okay the second to the last uh, major cause of 
uh, environmental problem. Okay. Which is excluding environmental costs from market prices. So, prices of goods and services rarely include their harmful environmental and health costs. And because of this, it can create a major environmental problem. Okay? So, another basic cause of environmental problems has to do with how goods and services are priced in the marketplace. Okay? Companies using resources to provide goods for consumers generally are not required to pay for most of the environmental and health costs of supplying such goods. Okay? So, this companies uh, they they just pay for for the how they will uh, I, how they will produce that kind of product or that services but for its environmental and health effects they do not pay for that okay so for example you have timber companies companies they pay the cost of a clear cutting forest but do not pay for the resulting environmental degradation and the loss of wildlife habitat. Okay? So, that's a reality. So, they just only pay, like timber company, they just only pay for the clear-cutting forest. But, the environmental effects, okay, they do not pay for that. Okay? The primary goal of a company is just to maximize profits for its owners or stockholders. So, it is not inclined to add these costs to its prices voluntarily because the prices of goods and services do not include most of their harmful environmental and health costs. Consumers and decision makers have no effective way to evaluate these harmful effects. Okay? So, even consumers so has no idea of what would be the harmful effects, okay? Or has no effective way to evaluate the harmful effects that they get from this company, okay? Because this company, they just, uh, they just want, their thought is just to have profit, 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 okay? That's only their goal, to make profit, okay? But to include such environmental problems and health effects, they don't have that. Okay. So, another problem that we can uh, actually, so this is what I have said earlier, no? How goods and services are priced in the market. Okay. So, this is what we call the excluding environmental costs. And companies using such resources to provide goods for consumers generally are not required to pay for most of the harmful environmental health effects. So, example is the timber company. And also another problem is that governments give companies subsidies such as tax breaks and payments to assist with using resources to run their businesses. Okay, so what happens if, if the governments will give this company subsidies for such as tax, tax breaks? Okay. What happens is that this helps companies to create jobs and stimulate economies. Okay? But environmentally harmful subsidies encourages the depletion and degradation of the natural capital. Okay? Because of these subsidies, the companies is or the companies are prone to environmentally harmful subsidies which encourage them to get these resources which can deplete our natural resources, which can deplete our natural capital, which can degrade our natural capital because they have that kind of money now to get that resource because this, they have tax breaks. Okay? Or even the governments have the tendency to give them that kind amount of money, then therefore that company will use that money to get that resources which have an environmentally harmful uh, effects, okay? So, we could lead more sustainability 
sustainably and increase our beneficial environmental impact by finding ways to include in market prices and harmful environmental and health costs of the goods and services that we use. And that is what we call the what principle or key component of what key component that is actually the full cost pricing, okay, which we have learned on the key components of sustainability, okay, so we can include this. So, in order to achieve this, there are actually two ways on how to deal with this, okay, so, so what is these two ways? Number one is the subsidy shift. And the other one is the tax shape. Okay. So what is the subsidy shape? This is actually very important because we can actually get a knowledge from this kind of uh, ways in order to uh, to achieve a beneficial environmental impact. Okay. So subsidy shape. Okay. How about we shift from environmentally harmful government subsidies to environmentally beneficial subsidies okay that is what we call the subsidy shift how about we invest more on environmentally beneficial impact rather than environmentally harmful impacts okay so we subsidize beneficial environmental impact rather than harmful environmental impact and another one is tax shape. What is this tax shape? Okay? We tax pollution and waste heavily while reducing taxes on income and wealth. That is also another way that we can have, we can expand and increase our beneficial environmental impact. Because as we already knew that nowadays, there are a lot of environmental degradation that or natural degradation that are happening because of the uh, technologies or the or the industrials nowadays, the industrial revolutions nowadays in factories, in companies. Okay, so why not we impose uh, large taxes or high taxes in pollution and waste? So the government will 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 eventually have uh, will benefit, okay, okay, will benefit because because there are a lot of companies, there are a lot of uh, factories that are actually uh, uh, have a effect on the environment because of their pollutions and wastes. If the government will impose high taxes on those companies, then the government will also benefit them. Okay, why not? Why not do that, okay? So that we will have a beneficial environmental impact because from when we impose high taxes on pollution and waste, then there will be a less dumping of chemical wastes and there could be a less, uh, which, which results to less pollution in the environment, okay? So that is what we call the tax shift. And the last one is the major cause of environmental uh, problem is what we call the increasing isolation from nature. We are increasingly isolated uh, from nature, okay? So, this is actually what we call the natural deficit disorder. This is a disorder. What is this disorder? I know some of you are already uh, experiencing this kind of disorder. Why? This is actually a shifting from rural to urban living. So this includes uh, artificial urban environments and the increasing use of cell phones. So some of us are already using cell phones, computers, and other electronic devices without... Uh, so we are, uh, we are using the cell phones, computers, and other electronic devices without the knowledge or without concerning what is actually happening in our natural world. We are actually isolating ourselves on our children from the natural world. Okay, this is actually known as the natural deficit disorder. 
This is not surprisingly that many people do not know the full story of where their food, water, and other goods came from. Because we are more focused on cell phone, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Wattpad, uh, teleseries, watching movies, TVs, uh, online games, Mobile Legends, Dota, everything, and so on and so on forth. We are concerned with our electronic devices. We are already isolating ourselves from the natural world. And even our children nowadays, they are more on laptops, tablets, computers, cell phones. They don't go outside. What is actually really happening on our environment? Similarly, many people are unaware of the amounts of wastes and pollutants they produce. After they eat, they will just dump their wastes. After they do this, they do that. They acquire these resources, dump, dump, dump. Okay? Uh, they dump their wastes, although the, there will be a garbage truck that will get that kind of waste. Okay? And how they affect the environment? Some analysts ask how will we live more sustainably by shrinking our ecological footprints and expanding our beneficial environmental impact if we do not appreciate the beauty and importance of nature and understand that we are utterly dependent on the Earth's natural system and the natural capital they provide. Okay? So some environmental leaders are focusing on this problem. So this concerns us. So we should not isolate ourselves from nature. Okay? We must also have the idea and have the principle that we are involved on this kind of problem. We need to do such work to create and expand our environmental impacts and shrink an ecological footprints and because of this we need to realize the beauty and importance of nature and to understand that we are being dependent on the resources that we get from nature itself we need to understand that because if we don't understand that from for the generation to come there will be a time that there will be no more resources that we can get. 